Live from San Diego, California, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon and CloudNativeCon. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019 in San Diego, California. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is John Trier, and first of all, happy to welcome back to the program, Diane Mueller, who is the, the tech lead of Cloud Native Technology, I'm sorry, I'm getting the wrong, it's Director of Community Development at Red Hat, because Renaud Goubet is the technical lead of Cloud Native Technologies at NVIDIA. Getting to the end of day one, I've got three days, I got to make sure you're I gonna, sort all these things out. You got to keep a little more Red Bull <laughs> in the conversation. All right, well, there's definitely a lot of energy. Most people, we don't even need Red Bull here, because we are at day one, but Diane, we're going to start at day zero. Oh my, yeah. So, you know, you know you've got you know, a good group of community of geeks, when they're like, oh yeah, let me fly in a day early and do like a half day or full day of, of deep dives there. So the Red Hat team decided to bring everybody on a boat, I guess. Yeah, so um, the OpenShift Commons gathering for this KubeCon, we hosted at, on the Inspiration Hornblower. Um, we had about 560 people on a boat. I promised them that it wouldn't leave the dock, but we did still have a little bit of that wake going on every time one of the big military boats came by. And uh, so people were like a little, you know, by the end of the day. But um, from 8 a.m. in the morning till 8 p.m. in the evening, we just gathered, um, had some amazing deep dives. There was, you know, unbelievable conversations on stage, off stage, uh, and we had uh, a wonderful conversation with some of the new uh, DevOps folks that have just come on board. Uh, that's a metaphor for navigation and KubeCon and, and for our event. Um, you know, Andrew Clay Schaefer, uh, John Willis, the um, inevitable uh, Chris Pinella, who runs Open Innovation Labs, and Jay Bloom um, have all just formed the Global Transformation Office. I love that title. Um, and they're going to be helping to preach the gospel of um, cultural DevOps and agile transformation um, from a Red Hat. Um, office from, from now going on, they, it was a wonderful conversation. I felt privileged to actually get to moderate it and then just amazing people um, coming forward and sharing their stories. There was uh, a great um, session, that Steve Dake, who's with IBM doing all the Istio stuff, did, I, you know, I've never seen Istio done so well, deployment um, explained so well, and all of the content's going to be recorded and up on there, and we streamed it live on Facebook but I'm still like sort of reeling from the amount of information overload and I think that's uh, the, the nice thing about doing a day zero event um, is that it's a smaller group of people. So we had uh, 600 people register, About I think it was 560 something people show up and we got that facial recognition so that now when they're traveling through the hallways here with 12,000 other people, they go, oh, you were in the room, I met you there. And, and that's really the whole purpose for Commons events. Yeah, I, I tell you, this is definitely one of those shows that uh, it doesn't take long where I, I say, hey, my brain is full, can I go home now? Yeah. Uh, Renaud, I love your first impressions of KubeCon. Did you get to go to the Day Zero event? And uh, what, what, what sort of things have you been seeing um, so, so far? So I've been, mostly, I went to the Lightning Talks which were amazing, I think, definitely. There are uh, a number of uh, shout outs to the GPU one, of course, uh, coming from NVIDIA, but I've definitely enjoyed, um, for example, the amazing DNS one, um, the one about operators, and generally, uh, all of them were very high quality. Yeah, so. Is this your first KubeCon? Have you? Um, I've been there, I've been at KubeCon Europe, this is my third KubeCon, mm -hmm. I've been at KubeCon Europe uh, in the past, and You're US an old too. hat, yeah, old hand at this. Well, hey, so before we get into the operator framework, and I want to, I'd love to dig into this, yeah. I just wanted to ask one more uh, thought, thought about the op OpenShift Commons, the Commons in general, uh, the relationship between uh, OpenShift, uh, the, the offering, and then okay, the Commons and OKD, and then maybe the announcement yeah. about, about uh, OKD.io and something yeah, like so, that. Yeah, um, so a couple of things happened yesterday. Yesterday we dropped OKD4, um, the alpha release, so anyone who wants to test that out and try it out, um, it's an all operators based uh, deployment of OpenShift, um, which is what OpenShift 4 is. Um, it's all um, a slightly new architectural deployment methodology based on the operator framework. Um, and we've been working very diligently to um, 
uh, populate operatorhub.io, which is where all of the upstream projects that have operators, like the one that Renault has created um, for NVIDIA's GPUs, um, are being hosted so that anyone can deploy them, whether on OpenShift or any Kubernetes. So that that dropped, and uh, yesterday we dropped um, and announced open sourcing Quay as projectquay.io, so there's a lot of IOs going on here. But um, projectquay.io is, um, is a fulfillment, really, of a commitment by uh, Red Hat that whenever we do an acquisition, and um, the poor Quay folks have been, um, they were acquired by CoreOS, and CoreOS were acquired by Red Hat and then IBM there, and so in the interim, they've been um, diligently working away to make the code available um, as open source, and that um, hit last week, and um, to some really interesting um, end users that are coming up, and um, now looking forward to having them to contribute to that project as well. But um, I think the operator framework really has been the big um, thing that we've been really hearing, uh, getting a lot of uptake on. Uh, it's been the new pattern for deploying applications or services um, and getting things beyond just a basic install um, of a service on OpenShift or any Kubernetes. And that's really um, where uh, one of the exciting things yesterday, um, and we were talking, Renault and I were talking about this earlier, was that um, ExxonMobil um, sent a data scientist to the OpenShift Commons, Audrey Resnick, who gave this amazing presentation about um, Jupyter Hub, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, deploying them, and, and how um, like OpenShift and the advent of operators for things like GPUs is really helping them enable data scientists to do their work, and, because a lot of the stuff that data scientists do is almost disposable. They'll run an experiment, maybe they don't get the result they want, and then it just goes away, which is perfect for a Kubernetes workload. But there are other things you need, like GPUs, um, and the work that um, NVIDIA has been doing to enable that on OpenShift uh, has been just really uh, very helpful. And it was, it was a great talk, but we were talking about it from the first, because data scientists don't want to know anything about what's under the hood, they just want to run their experiments, so. Yeah, so yeah. Renaud, let's, uh, let's understand how you got involved in, in, in yeah. the creation of uh, so, the operator. So generally, if we take a step back and look a bit at what we're trying to do is, uh, with AI, ML, and generally like um, edge infrastructure and 5G, um, we're seeing a lot of people that are trying to build and run applications, whether it's in data center or at the edge. And what we're trying to do here with, these, with, with this operator is to bring GPUs to enterprise Kubernetes. And this is what we're working with, with Red Hat, and um, this is where, for example, things like the operator SDK helps us a lot. Um, so uh, what we've built is this NVIDIA GPU operator um, that's based on the uh, operator SDK, where it allows us to, in multiple phases, to, uh, in the first phase, for example, uh, install all the components that a data scientist, or generally um, a, a GPU cluster might want to or need, uh, whether it's the dri NVIDIA driver, the container runtime, the Kubernetes device plugin, the monitoring components. Phase two is, um, as you go on and build an infrastructure, um, you want to be able to have the automation um, that is here, and more, more importantly, the update part. So being able to update your different components. Um, phase three is generally being able to have a life cycle. So as you manage multiple machines, these are going to get into different states. Some of them are going to fail. Being able to um, get from these bad states to uh, good states, how do you recover from them is super helpful. And then the last one is monitoring, which is being able to actually uh, give insights to our users. So the operator SDK has helped us a lot here, just laying out these different steps, and in a way, um, it's done the same thing as what we're trying to do for our customers, uh, the different data scientists, which is um, basically um, get out of our way and f allow us to focus on core business values. So the operator basically takes care of things that are pretty cool as an engineer. I love to do a leader election, but that doesn't really help me to focus on like my core business value. How do I do the updates? Uh, Renaud, can I uh, step back one second, maybe get, yeah. go up a level? The problem here is that uh, each physical machine has only uh, a limited number of, of NVIDIA GPUs there. Yeah and you've got a bunch of containers uh, yep. that may be spawning on different machines and so yep. they have to figure out 
do I have a GPU? Can I grab one? And, and if I'm using it, I, I have to. I, I assume I have to reserve it, and other people can't use it, and then I have to give it up. Is that the is that the problem we're solving here? Or? Um, so this is a problem that uh, we've worked with the Kubernetes community so that like the whole resource management is something that is integrated almost as a first class citizen in Kubernetes. Being able to advertise the number of GPUs that are in your cluster and in use, and then being able to actually um, uh, run or schedule these containers. Um, the interesting components that we also recently added are, for example, the monitoring, being able to see that a specific Jupyter notebook is using this much of GPU utilization. And so these are super cool um, to, uh, like um, features that have been coming in the past two years in Kubernetes, and which uh, Red Hat has been super helpful, um, at least in these discussions, uh, pushing these different features forward so that we see better enterprise support. Yeah. I, th I think the thing with um, with operators and the operator lifecycle management part of it is really trying to get to day two. So um, there are lots of different methodologies, whether it's Ansible or um, Python or, or J uh, Java or uh, that's Helm or anything else that can get you an install of a service or an application or something um, and instantiate it. But and. And, the operate, and we support all of that um, with, with SDKs to help people. But what we're trying to do is bridge the, to this, the day two stuff. So, um, the, you know, to get people to autopilot, you know, and there's a whole uh, capacity maturity model that um, if you go to operatorhub.io, you can see different operators are at different stages of the game. So it's been, um, it's been interesting to work with people to see um, the aha moment when they realize, oh, I can do this and then I can walk away and then if that pod, that cluster dies, it'll just, you know, I, yeah. always, I love the word automagically, but um, they, you know, it's really the goal um, is to help um, alleviate the, the, the hands-on part of day two and to get more automation into the services and applications we deploy. Right, and when they, when they this is created, of course it works well with OpenShift, yeah. but it also works for any Kubernetes, correct? Operatorhub.io, everything in there runs on any Kubernetes, and that's really, the goal is to be able to take stuff in a hybrid cloud model, you want to be able to run it anywhere you want, so we want people to be able to do it anywhere. Yeah, so I, I, this really should be an enabler for everything that NVIDIA has been doing to be fully cloud native, yes? I think completely. Uh, our goal here is, this is a new tech, of course this is a bit, comp there's a lot of complexity, and this is where we're working towards, is reducing that complexity and making sure that people that are data, data scientists, uh, AI or machine learning engineers, are able to focus on their core business value. Yeah. And, and you know, you, you watch, um, all of the different services and the different things that um, the data scientists are using, they don't really want to know what's under, under the hood. They would like to just open up a Jupyter Hub notebook, have everything there they need, train their models, have them run, and then after they're done, they're done. And it goes away and hopefully they're, they remember to turn off the, the GPUs and the <laughs> AW, whatever, wherever it is and they don't keep getting billed for it. But that's the real, the beauty of it is that um, they don't have to worry so much anymore about that. And you know, we've got a whole nice life cycle yeah. with um, source to image or S2I, and they can just quickly build and deploy it. It's, it's been, uh, you know, it's near and dear to my heart, the, the machine learning, the AI side of stuff. It is one of the more interesting, you know, every, it's the catchy thing, that, but the workflows. But people are really doing it today, and it's been, we had uh, two, three weeks ago in San Francisco, we had a whole OpenShift Commons gathering just on AI and ML, and you know, it was amazing to hear, I think that's the most redeeming thing, or most rewarding thing, rather, for people who are working on Kubernetes, is to have the folks who are doing workloads come and say, wow, you know, this is what we're doing, because we don't get to see that all the time, and um, it, it was pretty amazing, and it's been, I, you know, makes it all worthwhile, so. Diane, Renault, thank you so much for, for the updates. Congratulations on the launch of the operators and look forward to hearing more in the future. All right, glad All right. to be here. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman. More coverage here from KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2019. Thanks for watching theCUBE.